John's Gospel, chapter 2, really contains the mystery of the resurrection. But it's not just so much that it's about just the resurrection. There is more that's contained here that's a mystery that is unlocked for us. But you know that the key to the kingdom of God is the key of patience, the key of waiting for God's timing, key of waiting for God's resurrection timing. What do I mean by this? Well, if we look at even the revelation of Jesus Christ, when he was made manifest among us, when he came as a baby, God waited for a specific time. It was prophesied. God waited. He was patient, patiently waiting for the fulfillment of time. And here in John chapter 2, we have on the third day. The third day is a significant, a significant day in the kingdom of God. It's a day of resurrection. It's a day of authority, a day of power. And we see this again mirrored much later in John's gospel at the resurrection of Lazarus. When Jesus heard of the desert, death of Lazarus, he waited free well, he waited two days and then left to go to raise him on the third day. There is something special about the number three. And then even at Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, he was in the ground for, and on the third day, he rose again. He resurrected. So there is something about God's power in patient waiting and God's timing. If you want God's resurrection power in your life, then you have to understand the times, the nature of God, the seasons of God, the periods of waiting, the periods of prophetic declaration and waiting for God's revelation. You see, we've got into this age where we expect everything at our fingertips. We expect that if we've received the prophetic word, it's going to happen immediately. And if it doesn't, then we start blaming things, we start finding reasons why God's delayed, maybe people have got involved and manipulated the situation and staved off God's power. All of this is ludicrous because God is supreme. God, when he has determined something's going to happen at a place and a time, it will happen by his own authority. There is no authority greater than God's. So you see, actually, it's about understanding God's timing and God's power. So on the third day, Jesus appears at this wedding in this story, and he's reluctant to reveal his glory. Basically, why, why do you involve me? It's not my time, is what he says to his mum. But his mum has seen something in him. Something that can change a situation. She sees that the party is about to die on the third day. There's, they're faced with death. But she's seen the power of God. And she turns to Jesus. And she recognizes the power of God. And she says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now this is very interesting whatever jesus tells you whatever the spirit of god tells you do it but it has to be in his timing and in this timing aligned with the will of god we see that the death of the party the running out of wine is transformed in a moment jesus brings in water and transforms it into wine it's transformed out of view it's within the jars god's work is hidden God's work is in the secret place, it's in the, the privacy of the supernatural realm. But when he's working, the fruit of his work suddenly reveals. It's not instantaneous, but it's in the right time. And this is the key to walking in the power of the resurrection, is to understand the authority of the voice of Jesus Christ, the authority of the Holy Spirit and the Father in heaven, and their timing. It's not a matter of, well, I know God will do it, so it's going to happen now. It's a matter of, well, I know God will do it, but let me enter into his counsel to see when he will do it and align with his timing. And it's when we come into that counsel of God, the counsel of heaven, that we begin to see the power of God made manifest among us. So as we move on, 
through this passage, we see that this resurrection power of Jesus is demonstrated. And then we move into the second half when Jesus clears the temple courts and he's challenged. And there's a lot going on here that tells us about the power of the resurrection, what it did in the spiritual realm, what it continues to do in the spiritual realm, and how we can align with that power. So Jesus was, in fact, challenged by the Pharisees and by the people who ran the temple of God. Jesus walked in and saw that they were trading animals, trading for commerce, money changers. They had tables. Sheep and cattle were being sold. Why? Because these people knew that people needed to cleanse themselves from their sins, from their guilt, from their shame, and they had an animal sacrifice to do it. So why bring your own animal when you can buy one from the traders of the courts? You see, what was going on here was the grace of God. The temple was designed to be a place of grace, a place of coming into God's presence and meeting with him. Instead, it was transformed by people into a place of trade, a place of commerce, where you could pay money, get a sacrifice and be clean and come back, and be ritually clean until the next time. And they were missing God. And his grace. So Jesus is enraged by this because he's containing resurrection glory and power within him that will put asunder these sacrifices. It will put aside all of this blame. You know, there is one called the accuser. We also know him as Satan or the devil who accuses us day and night. He'll come into that place and he'll say, oh, look at their guilt and their shame. And if we listen and hearken to that voice and step away from the resurrection power of Jesus, we'll start thinking, what can I do to, to put myself right with God? What can I do? What, how much should I fast? How much should I pray? How much should I do? What should I do in order to, to get my heart right with God? And we miss the point that Jesus has entered the temple. His resurrection glory has drove out this need to trade your guilt and your shame for grace. And he says that his power is enough, his love is enough. There's no need for sacrifice anymore because he has done the ultimate sacrifice. So just come into God's presence. And it says, zeal for your house will consume me is, is what was written. And it's about Jesus. And his house is a place of God's dwelling with us. And he has ultimate passion for that. So he's not going to let anything get in the way of his presence, his spirit being in you. And people responded to him. What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? And Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Because they weren't aligned with the resurrection glory of God, they missed the point. They thought he was talking about the building, the stones. Jesus was talking about his body. You see, when you step into the power and the glory of God, your mind changes, your understanding and perception changes. You can use earthly words to describe things, but you have a spiritual revelation of what the real meaning is. So the word temple, in earthly realm means a building made of stone, brick, mortar, whatever. But in spiritual language, it means your body. This is the place where God lives. And you get this revelation with the resurrection power of God. That he has taken our inner being and made it alive so that he can live inside us. And this authority, this resurrection power of Jesus Christ is able to take things that are dead and bring them back to life. Things in your life that are dead, things that have just flitted away, come to nothing, situations that are desperate, situations that are distraught and you're thinking, how can this turn around? It's terrible. 
You may look in your life and see distraction happening, almost as if Satan himself has set himself against you and started to work in your life, weave his way through it, and bring distraction in relationships, in finances, in your job, in communications, in your church life, in your family life. But the resurrection power of Jesus Christ is able to set that straight. If you call on the name of Jesus, ask him to step in to your life. He puts aside all the guilt, all the shame, all the blame, all the work of the accuser. He puts aside the work of the devil. He brings his resurrection glory. He brings his grace. And he can put a stop to all the works of the, dis the destroyer. Even more than that, he can empower you to bring the resurrection power of God into situations, to bring healing where there is disease, to bring right minds where there is corrupt thinking, to bring prosperity and spiritual, I'm talking about spiritual prosperity, alignment with God, where there is spiritual corruption and destruction, to bring peace where there is violence. And all of this can be done through prayer, through prophecy, through intercession, or through actual action, from, through making a difference. Doing something in line with the prophetic voice of God, with the will of God and his timing, can bring about change, can turn a situation around from death into life. And you know, what's even more powerful is the fact that if you believe in Jesus and have received his Holy Spirit, that you are now placed in the heavenly realms. And in the heavenly realms were the original temple courts, the original temple of God. It's where Moses got his design for the tabernacle. It's where people got the design for the temple courts that existed on earth. These places existed in heaven to begin with. And you have the spiritual access in Jesus Christ to walk into those places of grace and to be with God, to walk among the council of heaven and enter into the prophetic council of God to understand the resurrection ways and the resurrection power of God. And so let's enter into a time of meditation. These times allow you to connect with God and to go deeper in the Holy Spirit, to access things of the Spirit which are beyond natural thinking, beyond rationalization. These are matters of Spirit. So uh, wherever you are, I just encourage you to close your eyes and turn your hearts towards Jesus Christ. Turn your hearts towards the Holy Spirit, towards your Father in heaven, towards the light of his face. He is pleased with you, he loves you, and he welcomes you with open arms. He says, come, settle yourself in his resurrection power, settle yourself in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And in your heart, echo these words or say them aloud after me. Jesus Christ, I love you. You are welcome here. Jesus, bring me into your resurrection power. Open the eyes of my heart that I might see you in your glory, that I might see your resurrection power and perceive your work in my spirit. And I'll turn towards Holy Spirit in your heart and say, Holy Spirit, draw me into the heavenly realms, into the realm of resurrection, the realm of glory, the realm of Jesus Christ. Allow me to walk in the temple courts of grace, of holiness, of godly power, of resurrection. Now just allow Holy Spirit to carry your heart and your imagination into the heavenly realms to encounter the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that is accessible for you, your life, 
and people around you.